1 Timothy 6, 17-19 As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We are so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what it says, talk about the sermon, and just yuck it up here (laughs) with the staff. Uh, So today is a fun day. I'm joined by Pastor Justin McElderry. Hey, it's good to be here. Good to have you here, Justin, and also Pastor John Wyatt making a guest appearance. Yo, yo, yo. (laughs) Good to have you guys here. Uh, So we were having some fun kind of cutting it up (laughs) before we started. Uh, But as you guys know, listening, we are continuing through our Planted series, asking uh, those kind of of, uh, general or basic questions about the faith. You know, who is God? We talked about that. What is the church? What is a disciple? But now we're kind of getting in the weeds a little bit, something that's not a light topic, uh, talking about money. So if you guys watch the messages, as always, you can watch them on YouTube. Justin was at Cyprus. John was at Los Al talking about how does God feel about money as Christians? How should we feel about money? And I think to help our conversation, we're watching some good memes (laughs) on social media. (laughs) They kind of loosened us up a little bit because definitely for some, you know, it's, 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 couldn't be a sensitive subject and we yeah. definitely honor that. So yeah, yeah you guys, um, I, how much money do you have in your pockets right now? No, I won't ask that. <laughs> probably a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, on this day and age, it's rare. Like yeah. sometimes, yeah, like yeah. I usually just have cards on me. and that's, yeah. that's Which it. made me laugh from the uh, video. Yeah. The, uh, the intro video with the person fanning themselves with money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at Los Al, I got up and I said, all right, if you have your water cash, go ahead and bring it out. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys haven't seen, funny. those videos have been great. And oh, this yeah. one was so funny. It was like a, a rumba or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. The music. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Oh, yeah. so good. But guys, uh, was there anything? So the passage that you heard uh, Pastor John talk from, uh, First Timothy, which uh, really cool. John, I liked how you framed it with, you know, this is Paul kind of towards the end of his life, but he doesn't know what's going to happen. So he's giving pastoral wisdom to mm-hmm. Timothy. And yeah. part of that is like, hey, how do we deal with finances, with this church? Like, yeah. how do you finish this race well? Yeah. No, it was it was interesting. One thing I pointed out was just that when I was – it's such a small book that you can really read through it in one sitting multiple yeah. times. And as I did, I found myself just seeing the jolting language of Paul. Mm. Like he's really concerned about those who are being led uh, out of the church down the road to destruction. He's yeah. really concerned about uh, those who are falling away from their faith or are following Satan yeah. uh, or being deceived by Satan and they're shipwrecking their lives. And so when you see that, you're kind of like, whoa, Paul, like – pretty serious here, but he's also very loving towards Timothy. And so yeah. you just see this deep, like, I'm, I'm just begging you to to do this. Yeah. And I think of the seven, I don't even know what admonitions, I don't even use words like that, but the, the seven exhortations about not falling away come yeah. towards the end and they center around money. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, very definitely. Cool. Yeah. Like strong, like, yeah, swerving yeah. and shipwrecked. I mean, that's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to shipwreck my life. That's, yeah. that's it is very colorful. Yeah. Very colorful, colorful yeah. language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, I started by talking about, I just kind of read through, not kind of, I did read through the table of contents of the rooted book and then, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, said, I wish there was the background music to this. One of those things is not like the other, right? Because when we look oh, at the table of contents, we think, oh yeah, all that stuff is really spiritual <laughs> yeah, and, yes. and, and religious. And then now money seems to come out of left field, but Paul ties it very clearly to the false teachers, you know, and I don't know if it's the cart or the horse, whether it's the love of money that, that is leading them down these paths of destruction and falsehood and dissension and all of that strife, mm. or if they went that way and then money is is kind of on the tail end of that, that they get off center and skewed in terms yeah. of what they value. Mm-hmm. But either way, money's either led them astray or it's going to keep them from coming back. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's such an important issue in, in yeah. what Paul and Timothy, or Timothy specifically is dealing with that Paul spent a good chunk of time for such a small letter yeah. um, and some pretty clear and serious um, direction in that. Mm-hmm. So, 
It's mm-hmm. it's funny, and, and and we don't have to get way into the theoretical weeds, you know. But as John's, uh, I was at Los Al where John was speaking, and while you were speaking, it really some of the things you said just kind of. It's interesting, you know. You think about systems in this world. You know, there's different economic systems, different government systems that seem to change over human history. You know, mm-hmm. they 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 kind of are fleshed out, or some are implemented now. Some would never work now, but it seems that money as a thing. I was thinking back, I remember, you know, going to elementary school and it's like, we learned about Native Americans and growing up in California and all their systems is like, they bartered with shells, you know, and they, and da, 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 you know, and it's, it's interesting all throughout human time. It seems that there is a, a, a system of exchange or currency that's very basic and very, um, almost programmed in, in a way into the human experience across cultures and, and uh, in places and in mm-hmm. uh, geographical locations, and I wonder if there's a sense of um, it's it's nice that there's a universal kind of understanding of exchanging things. I wonder how, like, if not for a monetary system, what would be the other way that humanity might interact? You know, mm-hmm. whether out of exploitation, and we do see things like forced slavery throughout history too. Right. You know, where. Yeah. Yeah, so it, they say that God talks about, or well, the Bible talks about money just as much as any other topic, yeah. you know, sometimes mm-hmm. more. You know, more than most, cases. for sure. Yeah, you know, and so it's mm-hmm. such a thing that, Justin, to your point of one thing is not like the other, it's like, yeah, but it's such a universal thing right. that comes with a load of baggage for everybody. Right. Yes. How do we deal with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's because, and I don't, again, who knows, but I think... If we trace down – again, uh, he says that money is the roots of all kinds of evil, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So um, I think deep down people are trying to secure themselves. That's kind of the approach I took it. Like we're trying to find significance, yeah. security, peace, and usually we cling to money because maybe we grew up in cultures where those who have money seem to not have those things. Um, yeah. But I think – like I was talking yesterday, we're not designed – like. Money doesn't breathe back. Money can't listen to yeah. us. It can take our breath away and ruin our life, but it doesn't give life. Mm. Um, only a person can breathe life into us, namely our creator. And so I think I, I look at Paul's – what he's saying, like don't be haughty and puffed up. Don't set your hope on the uncertainty of riches. So what are we looking for? We're looking for hope. We're looking for certainty. We're looking for – to not get taken advantage of. So if I can be on the top with power, mm. then – that puts me in a haughty position where yeah. I'm kind of saying I've established myself. Yeah. But that sounds like it's more out of fear or pride. Yeah. Or different things. And so I think I think built into the human condition, right? And I was as I was researching the word haughty, it talks about like um, it comes from a systemic inside problem. So mm. we're kind of our, – our human system is broken. We know that. Yeah. But we are bent towards ourselves and we're bent towards – going to things to secure us versus the one. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I appreciate I, – well, even you said we're getting into the weeds a little bit. We'll praise the Lord for that because we're talking about planted. And you hmm. need to know what the weeds are yeah. that can choke out the seed. And yeah. money chokes so many people out Yeah, because yeah. we try to rub material things on our soulish – uh, wounds or infections yeah. or fears or to desires. To fill those gaps. Yeah, to fill those of, gaps, yeah. and it doesn't work. Mm. And I love how Paul is telling us, or he's telling Timothy, and he's urging him, he's begging him, like, reset your hope. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's Calvin who says our hearts are idle factories or something to that effect. Mm. I'm not sure if that's the exact terminology, but that we are seeking something to give ourselves to, right? And money can seems to bring so much good stuff with it when we have it. But yeah. um and and it's always we have this vacuum that if we're not resting in God, and that's the Augustine quote I used that yesterday of you know our hearts are restless till they find their rest in God. It find its rest in God. And if we're not finding a rest in God, then we're gonna seek it in something. And and yeah. Money is always on the short list of top contenders, right? Yeah. That it's that it's not everyone's, but it's it's close yeah. <laughs> to yeah, yeah. to being near the top. And I think some of that too is that we have to deal with it. You know, mm-hmm. you yeah. talked about how ubiquitous exchange is, right? And yeah. so, um, monetary exchanges, we need it to get food. We need it to have shelter. You know, that's what mm-hmm. Paul talks about. But then, when we get a little excess, or no, not even when we have excess, because the first 
part, verses 6 to 10, are talking about what uh, I think John Stott calls the envious poor, and then 17 to 19 are the rich. And so it's whether you don't have it or you do have it, money is a problem. <laughs> and yeah. so yeah. – because you either yeah. want want more or you, you are misusing it what you have, or at least that's the mm-hmm. yeah. temptation. And so, um, yeah, it's just a really um, – I think I lost track of where I was going with that uh, in some sense, but, um, it, oh, but it's the idle thing. And, and, and yeah, so we, yeah, since yeah. we have to use it, um, then it easily expands into those things that become temptations yeah. to draw our hearts away from God. Yeah. So, and I, I think the good call is to be mindful of our hearts in that, you know, that's, I think that's a good word, Justin, to point out that it's like, it's not just, it's easy to think about, oh, the rich people struggle with money or something or the affluent, you know, and I think it's, you know, interesting in our, you know, kind of Western modern culture, you know, we think of, uh, you know, um, uh, Scrooge or Scrooge McDuck <laughs> for my generation, you know, or, <laughs> yeah, or something, yeah. or, or those those archetypal <laughs> figures of like, yeah. oh, that's people with money are miserly, but it's like, no, any end of the spectrum, you got to check your heart, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. and that's the mm-hmm. call for regardless of where you are on the spectrum. of Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I think it's probably too, for at least, I don't know that our congregation is would consider themselves wealthy i know i wouldn't consider myself well i think we're roughly middle class but but on a historical and global scale we are fantastically wealthy oh, like yeah. you know yeah. so if we if yeah. you're wondering which category you fall into probably yeah. the rich and even maybe not compared to your neighbors but yeah. compared historically and globally yeah. this 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 is a challenge for all of us yeah. mm-hmm. probably the very fact that we <clears throat> can choose to figure out what category we're in shows us how rich we're yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. We have the privilege of figuring yeah. it out versus, yeah. you know. If, if, yeah, if you have time to stop and ponder yeah, yeah, during yeah. the day and right. not have to worry about, right. I need to harvest, I need yeah. to factor, yeah. you know, da, yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, that's the telltale sign. Yeah. Um, so uh, what advice for our folks listening um, who might either be like, you know, I money, I get it, but like, I'm struggling to make ends meet. I'm struggling with finances. Like, how can we encourage folks? Because full transparency, um, for those of you listening and for you guys, and I, I believe I've shared this story with you guys before, I grew up um, in a wonderful church. I really appreciated my church, but every church, you know, has its hiccups. And I remember growing up with a skewed view of money. I, I, I so viewed money as an evil force or something mm-hmm. to not desire mm-hmm. that I think that... Um, it pre- uh, kind of gave me some challenges as an adult of how to navigate finances, you know, and now I think I've kind of maybe turned a bit of my perspective. Mm-hmm. So just for our folks listening, you know, if it's like, oh, I, money is something awkward to deal with, but I, I want to provide for my family. Any advice that you guys have for people listening? Again, going back to that spectrum of like rich and poor, money is totally bad or totally used to gratify myself? Yeah. <laughs> easy question. So. No, yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> and, and by that, I mean not an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a firm believer. And if you're asking God, the creator of all things, and if he is infused with everything, his goodness and his joy, which is why he's made everything for our enjoyment. So if, if that's true, then money doesn't have to be this separate thing that we – um, we give God everything else but the money thing because I'm so desperate in this area. Mm. Like, I think, you know, like a cat, if you look a cat in the eye, they're going to walk away from you. But if you sneak up on a cat and you gently pet it and, you know, like you, it, the same thing is true, I think, with money. If we just focus on money, mm. we're going to miss the giver. Mm. So if we can focus on, you know what, today I'm going to practice being generous with something of yeah. monetary value. Yeah. Like my creator who is insanely generous generous yeah. like if we if we can focus on how much the gratitude part of life and the generosity of god and be praying lord how do you want me to use my money i i guarantee you can't sit in god's presence you can't sit with jesus and then him not rub off on you mm-hmm. and i think it's going to be we got uh, we were talking about my life here. it's going to be different for every christian mm. um, which is why i appreciate this passage here paul says be generous in good works. Be rich in good works. He doesn't tell you how to do it. Yeah. He just says, pray about it. Follow Jesus. Yeah. Imitate, mimic the creator. And so money can be very scary, but I just want people to know. And I grew up in a very um, – finances were the roller coaster of everything and being the oldest of five kids. So like it was a huge fear of mine. 
But I kept asking God and begging God to show up and to show me and direct me, not just rescue me, but transform me. Because, mm-hmm. yes, I would love to wake up and have a bag of gold on my front you know, porch, but I also need to participate mm-hmm. in being generous. And I have found by participating yeah. in generosity, it frees me way more, no matter how much I had, because I was so grateful. Um, I just remember like uh, – Again, I we have time, but like I remember going in between semesters, and I had to work to get the first the the, the first payment due for each semester. And I went home, and I was working, and I was not going to make enough. And then someone said, "Hey, can you help me move on Martin Luther King Jr. Day?" Which happened to be my only day off. And mm. I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> but I said yes. He didn't say he was going to pay me, yeah, um, yeah. but he was in need, and so I was like, "You know, I'll just serve him." Yeah. And I remember working all day in an attic and moving like stereo equipment that weighed more than I did, and <laughs> it was just so crazy. And then at the end of the day. I said, God, that morning my devotions is reading through the Sermon on the Mountain, and God said, John, today you have me and I'm enough. Mm. And so that kind of helped shape my heart towards generosity. I'm going to be generous yeah. with my time. And then he ended up paying me, and I needed – I think I needed like $90 to meet my goal for the semester. He gave me 100 Whoa. And I was so – overwhelmed with yeah. how God provided. I just, and, and again, this is not to blow me up, but I was so grateful yeah, yeah. that God was so generous towards me. I just gave that $10 back to God and tithe because mm-hmm. I wanted to say it wasn't about me today and That's my cool. awesome character. It was more like God. So I think the more we can, because fear holds us back from participating in generosity. I do believe mm-hmm. that generosity, it transforms us. And it can be good. And then you start asking others for their advice or like, hey, what are some cool ways you've seen generosity? Yeah. And it, you get that momentum going. Yeah. And then the fear of money can – God can take that and because yeah. it is risky and needy. And uh, yeah, even when you – I just – I guess even if when you don't think you have enough, like just – you know, the C.S. Lewis quote about giving till it, 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 it pangs you a little bit. Like it, mm. God will use that. He, and I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Soul training. No, as you were – um I don't know what that means. It's kind of soul train. Soul training. You're training. Your soul. <laughs> soul training. I I'm thought like, you said soul yeah. training. I'm like, whoa. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, you whoa. dance hard enough, you yeah. want more money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So the one thing we'll remember. I'm going to do show notes linked to soul training. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, as you were talking, John, one of the things that I didn't mention this yesterday, and so, and I'm not even sure it came out in the study, so I could be wrong on this, but I think there's something to it. It talks about God who richly provides us everything to enjoy, mm-hmm. um, which is great. And that's, I think it's liberating f- to keep it, I guess, from maybe kind of the mindset you maybe grew up with, Sean, of like, hey, you know, you got to wear hair shirts and, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. flog yourself for if you have fun, right? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> It's like I grew up in a Lutheran church, so yeah. flogging yourself yeah. and something. And so hair shirts apparently yeah, were yeah, yeah, yeah. so, uh, yeah. uh, I want to see a hair shirt. I know, I don't know what that's just as I've heard older guys talk about how you can punish yourself. I don't know. So, um, uh, anyways, I don't have one. Um, but they, uh, but then it goes directly into they are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. And I, I think when I think everything to enjoy, mm. my default is, oh, what can I – how can I treat myself or how can I do something for my family? Mm -hmm. And I think when we put those two together, one of the things he gives us to enjoy is to actually give, like when we give and, you know, like, and it can be that, you know, like there's a certain degree of obligation at Christmas at some times, you know, you just, I'm not going to not give my kids a present because like, I just didn't think anything good. So you didn't get anything this year, you know, but, (laughs) but when you do think of that thing, that's good, there's nothing better. Right. And then, or when you help someone who's in need, um, that, and that blesses them. Yeah. That's something I enjoy Mm -hmm. as well, you know, and I don't need to enjoy it. I still do it because, you know, God maybe asks us to do it and to bless and to love Mm -hmm. whether we feel it or not. But I think that's some of the enjoyment as well is there's joy in giving it away. At least we can get to that place. And I think the only way we get to that place is not soul train, but soul training, like John (laughs) said, is, is trying it. And yeah. stepping out in it. And yeah. and as you do it and do it more, you build that muscle of enjoying yeah. giving. So that's, yeah. that's a great point. And I think, too, um, I think a very simple thing that people can do right now is, you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be um, making care packs, right? Mm, we're yeah. at church. We're going to have all this kind of material. We're going to have gum and toothpaste and socks and um, all these things. So, And people have um, used their talents. They're knitting together those beanies to yeah. put in there. So I think – Here's a here's a challenge. Um, it's it's 
they're free to take, right? So yeah. you could come participate and give of your time, right? So you're going to assemble them. You can take them for free. Here, here would be the challenge of generosity. Yeah. I would encourage anyone listening, including myself, which we do, go home, look at the bag, and then buy something that's not in there. Hmm. So that you're actually giving. So like my family, we were kind of looking at it and we're like, you know what? During Christmas time, it's really rainy and it's really cold. So we went on Amazon and we found these little ponchos. You get four for 20 bucks. That's not a lot for 20 bucks these days, right? But we said, hey, we want to feel, we want to be generous too. So we're going to take the resources given to us and then we want to add to it. That costs a lot of money because we want to give out more than four care packs. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of do that. And it's something that my kids and my wife and I, we decided like we want to do this. And so yeah. that has been so awesome because now we're taking the care packs that we created in community and then we're adding to it something that was a little, it stretched us. Mm, mm. But for us, we know the impact of how a raincoat at Christmas time can help people. And it, yeah. it, it took the sting of maybe $40 in raincoats. That's only eight. Yeah. It's like, it's totally worth it. So it's like, take the thing that's been given to you, Mm -hmm. the manna that's been provided, and then just just add something to it. Mm. Something that you would actually benefit from. And you know what? Maybe that's a candy bar. Because you're like, I would really love a candy. I don't know. like, But but just to start the soul Mm. in generosity, it can be a little step like that. And that's, um, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, and last week we were kind of talking about how supernatural our faith really is. Mm-hmm. And that's for people that, who were listening last time, that's that supernatural component. The Holy Spirit yes. will enlighten you, will yes. give you that idea of mm-hmm. little ponchos or, yes. you know, candy bars. I think if there's, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's plenty of diabetic homeless folks who are like, if it's a little uh, a granola sure. bar or whatever sure. it is, you know, and it's like, wow, you know, engage with the Lord because he will give you an idea that might be like, oh, aha, but it's like, no, that's a supernatural thing that's happening that's, yes. one, you know, to bless someone else, but like like you guys are saying, two, to practice that generosity and engaging with the Lord in that. And that idea came from my <clears throat> daughter who said, dad, what happens when it rains and there's the home, what do the homes mm, Yeah, yeah. And I was, and so my wife and I were talking, and then we thought, oh, let's look at, you know, oh, maybe we'll do ponchos. Oh, they're kind of expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could dismiss it, or we said, let's let's lean towards it. Yeah, yeah. And now it's become a, a healthy habit of yeah. my little daughter saying, oh, are we out of ponchos? Yeah, nice. can we get yeah. some more? Now, eventually, <laughs> I want to say, no, cough up some money. Yeah. You know, I want to keep, keep training now her you got to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So. yeah, but I think that's a good point to... Um, to not despise the good work God's doing in us. Like, so we talked about tithing at Cyprus. I don't know if you guys did, but, but that that's so intimidating for mm-hmm. someone who's yeah. not like, first of all, if you, if you are, or if you're young, start as soon as possible, because Absolutely. then it just becomes, yeah, get that habit. it just, yeah, it just happens. I, like, yeah. I mean, my mom did it growing <laughs> up. And so I had a couple jobs washing, washing trucks and yeah. doing occasional things. And so it wasn't much out of my paycheck, you know, yeah. it was five bucks instead of hundreds, but that built it. And so then it's, it's, so it's second nature for yes. me. Yes. Um, but I think the challenge, uh, that's not the case for everyone. So 10%, you're just like, are you kidding me? Like, you want me to live, you, you want me to get a poncho from John, you know, and live under the bridge. That's what's going to have to happen if I give 10%. So just start where you are and figure out what that next step is and move towards that. And then, you know, in the case, in, in my case and in, in Suzanne's, my wife is we are, tithing's not a problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could maybe buy other stuff with it, but it's it's not a it's not a struggle in yeah. any way. So now we have to, and we have a little bit explore. Okay, so how do we move beyond that? Because mm. the tithe isn't the target; generosity is. Yeah, yes. you know, and that's absolutely. the whole C.S. Lewis. Yes. Quote. In fact, I'll absolutely. find the C.S. Lewis quote. I have it in here. Okay. Um, yeah. That uh, that is. It, that's the challenge for us. And that's what God wants for us because a tithe isn't necessarily heart transformation. It could be for some, but for others, it could just be a legalism. And so, mm-hmm. so Paul doesn't mention tithing. He mentions generosity. So yes. tithing is a tool for us to reach that and, and to grow towards. And then once we get there beyond. So the CS Lewis quote is if our expenditure on comforts, luxuries, amusements, etc., is up to the standard common among those with the same income as our own, we are probably giving away too little. If our charities do not at all pinch or hamper us, I should say they are too small. There ought to be things we should like to do and cannot because our charitable expenditure excludes them. Mm. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know where that's from, but we, we can find that. Yeah, we'll put research. that in the show notes yeah. For, yeah. for proper documentation. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. 
Well, guys, we're uh, going to wrap it up. Um, uh, we're coming up against our time, but any uh, closing thoughts? Um, and John, I also wanted to mention, you talked about a book um, uh, that was sounded cool. It's called God and Your Stuff. Um, and we'll put a link to that on the show notes, but uh, do you want to mention that? Uh, yeah, I mean, briefly, it's just, like, it, it came out around the same time as Treasure Principle did. Um, okay. And Treasure Principle is a great one, but the God and Your Stuff, the vital link between your possession and your soul your possessions and your soul, um, not possessions of souls. That's demonology. We did that uh, in a few weeks. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. Um, no, but it's it's a great book. It's it's thin, um, but I really like it because it talks about developing the habits of Jesus. Mm. So, how do we become the kind of people that do the kind of things that Jesus did, namely with generosity yeah. in our things? Um, so, uh, but first. Hang out in the rooted book, do the devos there, and then after that, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, rooted is uh, yeah, been a fantastic book for us. And rooted, I that my final word would be rooted that week in rooted was great and practical, like really well done. And and one thing I didn't mention that I I didn't know where to pop it in there because it just doesn't again doesn't fit with the spiritual end of things. But if you don't have a budget, make a budget. Mm. You know, like like that's and some some should make it out of necessity because you have more months than money at the end of the month. Mm. But others, like, for example, we're, we're two incomes. And so we have enough, we never deficit spend, but we're also not maximizing what God has given us. Cause right now we're not functioning with a budget. We're doing okay. And mm-hmm. so there's a lot of leakage in that, <laughs> that, yeah. um, that is money that is not, being used generously or wisely and so yeah. so it doesn't matter where you are a budget mm-hmm. is something that's that's important yeah and as, it, as goofy as it sounds um we'll put a link to dave ramsey in the show notes uh, sure, dave ramsey sure. if you guys don't know he's a um, he's a christian guy but also like a financial consultant is a lot of wisdom and it's kind of almost the christian cliche to say go to dave ramsey you know but yeah. it's like it's it's really wise i think yeah. if if yeah. you are the people who are listening if money is weird if it's a struggle da 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 da, da well like maybe you have to take an honest look at yourself and be like, well, am I being irresponsible? You know, like, oh, I can't be generous because I don't have enough. Well, it's like, well, if you have a budget, you know, maybe look mm-hmm. at that. Yeah. yeah. And I would say if you don't know how to do a budget, yeah. ask someone for help. Yeah. Totally. And if you don't know who to ask, honestly, I'm a huge believer in just in your time with the Lord, Lord, I want to start budgeting well. I want to start doing generosity. Would yeah. you bring to my heart or mine someone um, that I could ask yeah. about budgeting or finances? Like, honestly, like I would just encourage so many people like, who is someone in your church or in your life that you admire mm. financially? I'm not yeah. saying look for the rich people. I'm totally, saying yeah. look for those that are deep followers of Jesus and then ask for permission. Like, hey, could I? And, and again, I, it's, I don't know how you set the environment up, but um, probably not in the foyer of the lobby. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, you kind of just say like, hey, like, would you mind sharing with me? You're giving principles. Like, how do you do generosity in God and money? Because I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to give more of my heart, more of myself over. Yeah. And um, because that's how I've learned. All of my Holy Spirit-inspired ideas have come through God's children and his disciples who are much shrewder and spiritual than I am. Mm -hmm. And it's just been neat to be like, oh, you can actually do that? Yeah. Because I think if we only grow up in one context, whether that's afraid of money, when you meet other people who aren't, you're like, oh, or, oh, you can... You could tithe like that, mm. or you could use your talent like that. Yeah. So I think, again, this could be a unifying thing for the church, and it doesn't have to be something we can't let in the doors. Yeah, but it could be actually something that spurs us on. So again, ask God, like Lord, who in my life right now do could I ask? Who could I risk asking about this? And usually, you find, I found the people that love giving to God love to share about how you can give to God because yeah. it's so exciting, it's so fun, and yeah. it is transformational. It's really cool. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. Uh, Thank everyone listening. Thank you for listening here on the Revive Podcast. Um, As always, share this episode with a friend. Um, If if we talked about something that you thought could be helpful, please send this out to them. You can find this podcast uh, on our YouTube pages, Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos. You can search us there, also on Facebook, on Instagram. The resources that we discussed, you can actually find them on our homepage. If you just go to our homepage and scroll down a little bit, um, we have the resources listed but you can also go directly to neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive and you can find all the past podcasts there with all the resources listed out. So that's a lot of helpful information. Also, we'd love to hear from you guys. Please email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. Until next time, we pray that God revives your soul.